In this lecture, I'm going to discuss a few examples on how to use the solution we generate from last time to solve some specific stream vibration problems. And uh, I'm going to use my study guide starting from page 122. And uh, this is a page which summarizes what we have discussed. At the top, it is stipulate the five key equations. From the force balance, we derive this uh, second order partial differential equation. The two boundary conditions are associated with two fixed boundary at the x equal to zero and the x equal to L. The two initial conditions are associated with uh, initial diffraction and the initial velocity. We leave them sufficiently general so we can solve a sufficiently general of family of equations, problems. And from the separation of variable we discussed in detail last session, we are able to generate the solution in series form for these partial differential equations. Within this solution, we have two group of parameters, Bn and the Bn star. They are essentially the Fourier coefficients of f and g. And within the solution, we also have another parameter lambda n, which is the eigen value when we solve the PDE. And this lambda n is uh, defined as C m pi over L. And uh, in, I will discuss a few examples in the uh, in the uh, next uh, few pages. For this example, we see a sketch of a strain, which initially, this is F, so initial diffraction look like this. The two boundary are fixed all the time. And that means, physically, this means we have a string. Initially, we put it. We put it at a specific point to a diffraction point K. Then we release the string. And then we like to see how the vibration is going to be. And at the point we put the string is at x equal to a. So this simple sketch has physical meaning, very close to reality. And uh, mathematically speaking, uh, we all only need to get the formula of this two segment of the initial diffraction. Then put into the coefficient we derived earlier and we get the coefficients. So one of the skill for this course, like I mentioned uh, in chapter 11, we shall be able to generate formulas from a sketch. We shall be able to generate a sketch from a formula. Now, how do we generate these two formula from this sketch? We break it into two parts first. There are two linear functions. 
First, uh, are we able to generate a linear function if the two points, if we know only two points? The answer is yes. We can represent a function as y equal to slope times x plus the interception. If we use that formula, the slope can be found based on the given information. It's going to be k over a. So we leave the slope here and that we know the interception has to be zero. So the first segment is easy to construct. And that section is for x between zero and a. The second segment, we can use the same formula, f equal to slope times x plus interception. We have two undetermined parameters in this expression, slope and the interception. The slope can be determined based on this line and the given information. That will be k divided by this distance. And the interception may be difficult to get, but uh, we have two pieces of information and uh, two equation, uh, equation with uh, two unknowns. So we have two pieces of information. First, it passes through this point. The two coordinates are known. And uh, for this point, the coordinate is also known. So we can eventually get this linear form. If uh, you have difficulty to generate this uh, equation, please let me know. It's a very important exercise. Then what we need to do is uh, put in these two formula step wisely and break the integral into two segments like uh, this for these two individual regions. We get these two integrals. Uh, even the two equations are linear, the integral could be troublesome, but the integration by parts is the key. So we can use integration by parts and uh, eventually get the answer. Uh, I derive by myself, take a couple hours. Uh, eventually, I was able to get this uh, expression for b sub m. Uh, if uh, l equal to pi, we have simplified the form. Uh, this is for bn. And the bn start is going to be zero because the initial velocity is zero. And before we go to the mass care representation, i like to show you the use of union step function. This is a how union step function, a one line of the uh, equation can represent the two segment of uh, this uh, equation. F can be write, written only in one line. First, we write um, the first segment between zero and a for x between zero and a we have this function times u 
of x. Q of x is a union step function. It, um, it's zero for x between negative infinity and zero. It's one for x greater than zero. So if we multiply uh, f by u, essentially it eliminates everything below x equal to zero. Then we have to represent uh, the function after x equal to a. For x is greater than a, we first have to eliminate this function's contribution between x equal to a and x equal to l. So we have to cut it off uh, by using this function. Remember, this is a shift. This is a union step function when we shift the function from x equal to zero to x equal to a. So that means we eliminate by using this negative sign, by eliminating the contribution of this function for x greater than a. Then we have to add the decider function for x between a and l. That's the function of f. Then we use the union step function shifted to a. In MathCamp, this union step function is represented by phi, but in most textbooks, uh, the authors usually use u. In MathCAD, we use phi, u or c. Now we go to MathCAD. First, I will show you once we get <coughs> the mathematical representation of f, we let MathCAD to do the integration. We get a simplified the form. Actually, you get a, this result right after you give the command to obtain this simplified form. Uh, remember how long, how troublesome it will take us to get this integral. This uh, integration by parts may take you a couple hours. But the mask can take only a fraction of a second. So this also serves as a point you can verify that you are answer. Um, then let me show you the examples. I first sketch it. In MathCAD, I define the function, define the parameter, and the range of x. And uh, this is what I show about f, three parts. Then I show, I want to make sure I enter everything correctly, two segment. And uh, remember phi, it's a built-in function in MathCAD for union step function. Then I step the, define the parameter, define the uh, coefficient for the solution. This is the resolved solution. Then we type the general solution. 
then we ask mass care to plot the diffraction at the different times. Notice the, there are seven or eight uh, profiles represent the solution at different times. Uh, you can see the diffraction, it moves from the initial diffraction like this to like this and the motion you can see how it moves um, this is a remarkable to me you can see the mask motion in graphic format notice i include only 21 uh, 20 terms and it's not bad of course if you include more terms you will it will give you give you the graphics representation longer. In the this page, I show you in Mesca we have an option to break the given function into two parts, like this. Then Everything else remains the same, just this portion. I want to make sure if you don't want to learn union step function, you can still use, uh, break the function into two parts. This is an operator in MASCAD, you can use it. Uh, it's too bad now, during this time, you don't have access to MASCAD. Um, you have to do it by hand, but if you have other software like Mathematica or MATLAB you are familiar with, by all means, let them do all the hard work for you. And the MASCA, you can even do animation. You can create a movie clip. This is what I, how I created using a special command. It takes me uh, quite a long time, it, uh, essentially overnight. I created this uh, movie clips. Um, oh, if you click what uh, I have, you can see the motion in continuous form. But you are not going to be responsible for it. Now let's look at another example. We know the solution, the general solution. And uh, here, this example, we have the initial diffraction is zero, but the initial velocity is given, is not zero. So how do we find the motion of a time we still can use this solution the parameter in this case bn is going to be zero because it depends on the initial diffraction only so bn disappear for this case bn is not zero so we all we need to do is take bn start put it in here break the integral into two parts and they integrate integration by parts it's uh, going to take some time but it's manageable finally we got some very simple form similar to the last example we can define g and uh, make sure we got the right in graphic form. Then we can use the BN star we get and uh, put, put it in here. I call B2 here. Um, then this is the series solution. Then we can tell 
upon for this solution we can see the motion the diffraction at different times for time equal to zero we have initial diffraction equal to zero some short moments later it increase 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 then it return so it's interesting to know this kind of uh, tools we have this is another example i represent g in a different form break into two parts this is a mesca operator then i can even see the motion in a movie clip the last example is very complicated we have a string between zero and the 10 pi so it's between zero to 10 pi and the between pi uh, two pi let's say between between two pi and the three pi i believe i keep fingers at the horizontal position and uh, then i put the string in the middle and then release it so the rest of the string are not affected but only in within a short section the string is uh, pulled and then released then i like to see the motion the integral is very complicated so i let mass care to do all the hard work i use uh, the two parts only for this two this segment of x i define the function by use by using union step function you can see that it's a consistent to what i introduced you need step function then yeah, the rest of the range for x f is zero i define this define the solution then again if our purpose is uh, to see the motion at different time you can see this is the initial diffraction then short moments later you can see the tip collapse and at t equal to three you can see what happened is uh, the tip of this uh, wave reduced to half and the one actually moved to the left the other wave moved to the right until they hit the end and when they return actually the tip goes downwards not upwards uh, it's interesting to see uh, i also create a movie clip i didn't put it up for you but for anyone who are interested in knowing it i can put it up uh, you will need a mask to drive it i think um, so i didn't put it up In next session, we are going to discuss heat transfer problem. This is a summary of what we're going to have from heat conduction problem, energy balance, we can see, 
we can generate a second order PDE like this. Notice on the left hand side, the temperature, partial derivative of temperature with respect to time is first order. And so this is the only difference between the heat transfer and stream vibration problem. Uh, so this is something we're gonna discuss before the end of the semester. I'll create another lecture for you shortly.